Hello, everyone. My name is Don Anders. I want to thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to give everyone a few minutes to log in. Uh, so if you just hold tight, we're going to give everyone 30 minutes or probably not a few minutes, probably one minute to log in. Uh, so just hold tight and then we'll get started. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Don Anders. I am the uh, president and CEO of Anders Retirement and Investment Advisors. Uh, I'm in Central Florida. Actually, we have offices throughout Florida. And um, you know, kind of just a background on me. I am an investment advisor representative. Uh, I've been helping people retire for 13 years now, and um, you know, our specialty is really preservation of principal, um, you know, uh, income, retirement. Um, but we're fully licensed. So, so if you're interested in those things, that's really what we're going to touch about. Uh, and in addition, maybe some things that you haven't really thought of in the past. Okay. All right. So first things first, to show everybody our fund disclosure, I'll leave it up for a second. Uh, I'm an investment advisor through Madison Avenue securities and, uh, that's my disclosure. Okay, good. Let's move on. Okay, so what we're going to be talking about specifically in this webinar is protection of principal. And now more than ever, it's important to make sure for most retirees uh, to protect their retirement. Um, you know, people don't have huge pensions. Most people don't have huge pensions like they used to. We're going to get into that. Um, and there's not really a lot of room for people to play. Uh, so, so what are ways that you can protect your retirement in these crazy times? Well, let's get into it. First off, there's five different types of protection that you really need to think about and, 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 and uh, consider. Number one is probably what you're thinking, principal protection. Um, you know, making sure that your accounts don't lose money uh, when things go crazy, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, making sure that that your principal is there no matter what. Number two is income protection, making sure that you have guaranteed income. Then there's fee protection. Do you know how much you're paying? Tax protection and advice protection. We're going to get into all those. It's going to take about 20 minutes. I'm going to try to go through them quick. Usually this is about a 45 minute long presentation, but um try to go kind of go through them and then if you have other questions or if you need to go i know some of you need to run i'm just going to go ahead if you need to leave early but you still have questions on the on your right hand side of the screen i threw up a um uh goes directly to our calendar so if you want to talk to a fiduciary advisor you can uh but i really hope you can stay for the whole thing because if you can stay for the whole thing I really think you're going to get some value out of it. Even if you're not a super conservative investor, um, I still think you'll see some value here and I can give you some tips uh, and you'll learn something. So I really hope you can stay for the whole thing. But I'll just leave that up just in case. Okay. So topic number one, and this is what most people are concerned with, is protection of principle. How do I protect my money? And, you know, it's getting harder and harder these days to to protect money and still be able to grow. There's really three parts of any investment. It, there's how liquid the money is, which means you know you can be able, you can take money out, you can get access to it. There's how much it can grow. And then there's how much risk you're taking. So once again, how liquid, how much it'll grow, and how much risk you're taking. So really you have to choose two of those three things. If you want something that's completely liquid and, and always growing no matter what, well, it's probably not gonna be that safe. Or if you want something that's safe and completely liquid, like a checking cash, what, you know, those types of accounts, money markets, they're probably not growing that much. That's the big problem with cash and checking and savings 
uh, or putting it under your mattress, as people say, is you're not really growing. And sometimes people say, yeah, I'm not growing, but I'm not losing. So who cares? Well, if everything else is increasing by 3% a year and you're staying even, that means you're actually losing 3% of your purchase um, of your purchase um, uh, power of your money every single year. So if you have $100, well, that $100 is, can buy you $100 worth of things right now. But if you earn nothing and everything else goes up by 3%, now your $100 can only buy you $97 worth of things. Does that make sense? So we want to make sure that while your money is safe and you want to make sure you have these types of accounts because these accounts are for, um, you know, get access to it now. They are for, you know, an emergency happens, need to take money out. That's where these accounts come in and are huge. But for money that you need long term, there's a few other options. Number one, uh, the first one is CDs and, you know, CDs in the past were amazing. Your parents and grandparents might have had CDs that paid upwards of, of 10, 12, 15. We've heard of CDs at one point paying over 20%, meaning that if you had $100,000, you could make $20,000 a year in interest. Well, as I record this, those don't exist. They don't even come close to existing. We're at one of the lowest all-time interest rates in history. So to think, you know, well, my grandfather always did that and that's what he told me to do. Well, times are different. This is not your grandfather's times. Things have changed, okay? So number two uh, are MIGAs or multi-year guaranteed annuities. So I know what you're thinking. Annuities, uh, you know, the A word is what we like to call them. Um, just know that all, not all annuities are created equally. Uh, some annuities are made to uh, give you income. Some annuities are made to annuitize, which you're gonna get into later. Um, but then other ones literally just work like a CD or, 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 or something similar to that. So what MIGAs are is they basically work like CDs. You commit your money from anywhere from three years all the way up to 10 years, and they give you a guaranteed interest rate. Uh, so, you know, for instance, if you have $100,000 and you go with a five-year account, the interest rate might be, not saying that it is right now, might be 3%. And if it's 3%, you'll get $3,000 a year for those five years. And after it matures, it's all yours. It's it's your money to have. So it works just like a CD. Um, and the problem with those is there's limited liquidity, like CDs, right? With a CD, you're tying your money up. With the with the MIGA multi-year guarantee annuity, you're also tying your my, your your money up, but they usually pay you a higher interest rate, which is why I like them. And the last and probably the most popular option for people who are conservative investors, or maybe even people who are moderate investors, they like the idea of the market, but they also want to put some risk on the company, are fixed index annuities. Now these are deferred, just like the other one, so. You're not losing access to your money. Um, and what I like about them is they give you a floor. So the least that can the, the account can go down to and they give you a cap, which is the most. So so I'm just going to give you some kind of a, an idea. Let's say the floor is one percent and the cap is five percent. And then they base you on a stock market index. The most popular one is the S&P 500. OK, so conservative people are saying, well, you just said it's it's safe. Well, here's how it works. If the S&P 500 goes up by 10%, you're capped out at five. That's the most you can make in that scenario in the account that I'm giving you. If the S&P 500 goes up by 20%, well, you're still capped out at five. But if the S&P 500 goes down by 10 or 20, or at one point during 2008, 50%, your money is guaranteed not to lose any money. And you also have a 1% minimum guarantee on the contract. So for those of you who are really conservative investors, but you still know you need to grow your money, this is a really good option. Because if you look at it historically, over, over any 10 year period, if you can get a 5% cap, you're going to average over three and a half percent. 
So with that, I mean, that's a, that's a pretty good option to have. Now, are you going to hit home runs? No, you're not going to get a 10 or a 15 or a 20% return. That's not what these accounts are made for. These accounts are made to keep you safe when everything goes bad and let you grow when everything goes good. Okay. So just remember that it's not made to hit home runs, but if you just say, you know what, I want to hit singles or doubles. Uh, it's a pretty good option for those. The other nice things about basically all three of these accounts, CDs, MIGAs, and fixed index annuities is none of them, or they can all be set up to have no fees at all. So um, you can set it up where you're not basically, you're basically not paying any kind of fees on it. Um, and they just will grow as they grow. Uh, and, and you won't lose any money. The downfall is they almost all have a certain term. So whether CDs can be as little as three months um, and, and uh, they can all be as high as 10 years, if not higher. I've seen CDs 20 years. Um, so just something to know there. And they're not all created equal. So if you think, well, I'm just going to go and just sign up for one. Well, they're not all created equal. As you know, uh, one bank might have a completely different CD than another bank, and the exact same thing goes for MIGAs, the exact same thing goes for fixed index annuities. So if you're interested in those, um, we can give you the current rates and uh, and let you go over, and we'll go over the options with you as well, okay? All right, let's move on. So income protection. This is a big thing. The number one concern for most retirees is you guessed it, running out of money. <laughs> the number two concern is dying for most people. So people usually are more afraid of running out of money than they are of dying in retirement. So how do we prevent that? Well, historically, you would do something like a pension. You would go work for a company. They would provide a pension to you when you retired. You would have that and your Social Security and great, you were happy. Well, Pensions are pretty much dying unless you're a public employee or work for a really big company. Uh, and even the really big companies are phasing out their pensions because it's getting really hard to manage. As people are living longer, that is a big risk to pension plans. So because of that, people are they're starting to say, you know what, we'd really rather you just go with a 401k or an IRA or do your own savings because we really don't want to be on the hook if you live to be 110 or 120, which some people think that's where life expectancy is going. So if you're in that situation and you don't have a pension or maybe you do have a pension, it's just not cutting it, there are a few other options for guaranteed income. Number one is annuitization. Now, this is an option that I am actually not that crazy about uh, for a few different reasons. Number one, you know how annuities kind of, so for some people have a bad rap because you'll lose control of the money and then, uh, you know, you put your money there, you lose control, they'll give you a payout. But then if you die, you know, they're going to keep it all. That's not an annuity. That's annuitization. So annuitization is where you basically give your money to a company and then they give you back a stream of income. Now, so why does that exist? Well, for a few reasons. Uh, number one is, and the number one thing is if you're younger than, a, than 59 and a half, sometimes you can annuitize and you'll avoid the 59 and a half percent tax penalty, um, which would be really good for you. There's some other reasons that we would use it as well, but I would say over 90, Eight to 99% of the time, I don't recommend annuitizing unless you really have to on that. So what's another option? What I personally like and what we use as a pension alternative is income riders. So an income rider is you can buy some life insurance policies have it. Uh, a lot of annuities have it where you basically go with an insurance company and you put the risk on the insurance company. So that same risk that, that your employer doesn't wanna take, that's why they don't have a pension, you can actually put on an insurance company with an income rider. And the way you do that is you get a contract like a fixed index annuity like we talked about before, or a fixed annuity like we talked about before, or it could even be variable in the market, um, but then you can buy an income rider. And it's usually gonna cost anywhere from, some of them are free, all the way up to one, 1.2% 1 um, in fees, depending on what it is. Some are a little bit higher, but on average, you're looking at one, 
1.2%. And you paying that fee, basically it's going to come off your interest. So instead of earning maybe 3 or 4%, you might earn 2 or 3% or whatever it is. But it guarantees your income for life. So you can take distributions out and know if I live to be 100, I'm still getting paid. If I live to be 105, I'm still getting paid. So, so while this isn't for everyone, for those of you who are worried about running out of money, these can actually be a very, very valuable type of account. And you probably want to look at it because it basically, if you're, if you're sitting here right now saying, you know what, I really wish I had a pension. I, I, I just wish I had a pension. I wish, I wish I was lucky enough to do that. Or let's say you have a pension, you go, I wish I had more of a pension. This is what uh, might be a good option for you. Now, it's not for everybody. So my recommendation is if you're thinking about doing that, uh, you can schedule an appointment. We can, we can see if it's a good fit for you. We can run it through compliance, make sure that, that, uh, that it's a good option. But for some of you, it might be a really good option. Okay. Okay. The next one is fee protection. Uh, now, our industry has a really big problem. And, and that is, you know, not all fees are disclosed right up front. Some fees are on the back end in those really big, thick books that you get from your 401k or your IRA um, that is called a prospectus, right? And it's huge and, and you fall asleep by the fifth page. Um, but there can be extra fees in there that you don't even know about inside your 401k, inside your IRAs, whatever it is, um, and especially inside variable annuities, there can be really, really high fees. We've seen fees over 4% in accounts that we've done reviews on. So here's my recommendation. My recommendation is to do what's called the shopping cart test. What the shopping cart test does is you can bring in, if you wanna, you know, we can talk over the phone, we can, we can do everything digitally, and you can, uh, send us your statements. We'll take a look at the prospectuses for you. We have software that can do that. And then we'll let you know exactly what you're paying. And the nice thing about it is we can do that. We don't charge anything to do it. And your worst case scenario is, you know. So we've done the shopping cart test for people. And some people say, you know, yeah, I don't, I don't think I'm paying 1% or one and a half percent. I think the fees are a little bit higher than I want. When we look at it, they might be paying almost nothing. But then other people have said, you know, I'm, I don't think I'm paying any fees. And we look at it and they're paying three or 4% in fees. So you should know. And that's something that our fiduciary advisors here in Florida can help you with. Um, and we can sit down, connect you to someone local over the phone. Don't even have to come in. We have, we have local offices if you want to, but don't even have to come in. We can sit down and go over all the options uh, and, and absolutely let you know uh, how many fees, how much in fees that you're paying. You should know how much you're paying, okay? The next one is tax protection. Uh, and for most of you, this is probably the most uh, overlooked part of your portfolio. Uh, and, and the reason why is, you know, a lot of us have just been told to put money in your 401k. Just save as much as you can to your 401k. Save as much as you can to your IRA, which is good advice. The problem is we're just assuming that taxes are going to be lower retired than they are while you're working. And for the most part, it's been true. Taxes have declined over time, but now we're at very low tax brackets and very high debt as a country. And the easiest way to get out of debt is to raise taxes. So one of the problems is, you know, a lot of our clients or a lot of people we meet with, they might be really comfortable right now. You might say my income is fine. It's covered. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, let's say you're making $4,000 uh, every single month in retirement. Great. Well, if you're at a 10 or a 15 or a 20% tax bracket, well, that then it, let's say you're at a 10% tax bracket just for round numbers sake. Well, you're paying $400. Great. I'm making $4,000 a month. I'm paying $400 a month in taxes after everything's said and done. Fantastic. Well, if taxes go up by 10 or 15%, let's say taxes go up to 25% for you. 
Well, now all of a sudden, you're not paying $400 in taxes. Now you're paying $1,000 in taxes, right? So that's an issue. That's something that you need to take a look at because if taxes go up, you are going to lose a portion of your money overnight. And that's something that we can help you with. There are investments, whether it's a Roth IRA or there's other investments that you can actually take money from taxable accounts, which we're gonna get into right here, always tax accounts like IRAs, 401ks, 403bs, and move them over to accounts like, I'll come back to this one, never tax accounts like Roth, Roth accounts, life insurance, things like that. So if you think, that what like what people say the tax train is coming if you think the taxes are going up this is probably a pretty good option um so just something to think about because right now if you have 401ks 403bs those types of accounts they are taxable okay and so you really want to look at getting as much money into these never tax buckets while you can while taxes are low there's never been a better time to do that now, I skipped over this slide, but I want to talk about this as well. And that is sometimes taxed accounts. So some of you have checking, savings, stocks, bonds, mutual funds. We call these non-qualified accounts, uh, accounts that you basically pay taxes on the earnings. Uh, you also have Social Security, annuities. So there's a bunch of different things that, that play in. You really need to look at where you're taking income uh, from and making sure that if you have accounts that might not be taxable, right? We don't know, they may or may not be. Well, you might wanna take income from those accounts because it might not throw you into another tax bracket if you do compared to taking it from the always tax account. So just something to think about. You wanna make sure you do this strategically. We're all about paying Uncle Sam uh, his fair share of taxes, but only his fair share. We don't think our clients should pay anything more than, his, than their fair share, okay? All right, the last one is advice protection. And, you know, before I said our industry has a, has a problem uh, with the fees, but they also have a problem with, you know, not everyone gives good advice. Um, and people are worried about that. Well, I wanna give you a resource that the government has set up uh, to figure out whether or not you have a fiduciary. So first off, let's talk about what a fiduciary is. A fiduciary is somebody who legally has to put your interests before theirs. They have to, you know, offer you whatever is best for you over whatever whatever is best for them. Uh, there's basically two ways that you can be um, you can be licensed. You can be a fiduciary or you can be a broker, which is just basically for commissions. Uh, we personally are set up to do both. Why? Because some of our clients need accounts. Uh, that you can only offer through the brokerage channel, channel but we're also fiduciary advisors uh, to make sure that we offer fiduciary advice, okay? Um, so we're set up for both. Now, that's on the right-hand side. Now, if you look on the left-hand side, that's how, you can actually, that's how you can be employed. So some people are what's called a captive advisor, meaning that they work for a company, that company dictates what they can offer, that company di dictates um what they can use what products they can use what mutual funds they offer now they still might be a fiduciary meaning that they still have to act in your best interest but if they're captive they might have to act in your best interest with limited accounts okay so that, so just because they're fiduciary doesn't mean they have access to everything that's out there uh the other thing is somebody who's independent so an independent person is somebody who they don't work for a big company. They're not there, you know, they don't have someone who's, you know, dictating on what they, they can use. They can use anything that's available to them. So the way we're set up is we are independent and then we can either act as a broker or a fiduciary, whichever is in your best interest. Um, so we're set up both ways. Um, and I really think that's the best thing for clients because we're basically set up to use as, as many different types of accounts as you might need to get your situation um, the right way, your account set up the right way. If you have limited accounts, if you have limited licenses, then you're gonna be set up with limited options for your clients. So that's why we're set up. So let me give you a resource and it's brokercheck.finra.org. 
That's brokercheck.finra.org. And basically what this website is, is it's a way that the, um, the government came out, um, SEC, FINRA, who, who does most of the licensing and compliance for financial advisors, they came out with this website so you can do research on your financial advisor to make sure that they're licensed the way you want them licensed, to make sure that um, they don't have any complaints, they don't have any lawsuits. Uh, you can also see if there's been any criminal actions. All of those things have to go on this website, which is a great resource for all of you. So my recommendation is to check it out. You can check me out if you want. Um, check out your current advisor. If they're not on that website, they might not be a financial advisor. Just a heads up. They might be a, um, you know, the word financial advisor actually isn't really regulated. So they could be, you know, an insurance salesperson or they could, uh, I've actually heard mortgage brokers call themselves financial advisors. So you want to make sure that you check that out um, and, and see whether or not the person you're working with is a financial advisor. Okay, so that's all uh, that's for the presentation. The one thing I'll say is if, if you enjoyed it, if you think you need help, if you feel like you're kind of, you know, uh, flying dark in these crazy times, we are here to help. Um, I'd love to talk with you or, or, or set you up with one of our fiduciary advisors throughout the state. It may or may not be me, um, but somebody who can help you with your situation. So uh, that link is still up on the right-hand side that goes directly to our calendar, and you can set up an appointment. Uh, thank you all so much. I really appreciate it. I hope to talk to you soon, uh, and best of luck protecting your retirement. Thanks. Bye.